Hello, welcome back. We're in chapter three now as we continue our fun exploration of chemistry. Uh, chapter three is we started inducing chemical bonds and stoichiometry. That's the chemical accounting. So let's talk about different types of bonding. So the one of the simplest is ionic, where one atom gives electrons to the other atom, and then they the positives positive track and, and the the uh, the unlike so unlike charges attract so the positive negative attract and the positive positive negative negative repel and ionic bonding is pretty easy uh, we know pretty much everything about it so uh, we just by using the Pythagorean theorem many many times and looking at diagonals and knowing the Coulomb attraction and repulsion you can figure out pretty much everything you know about ionic bonding there's even a uh, a shortcut called the Madelung constant, which you can learn if you go on to take organic inorganic chemistry. It's a little more complicated also. A lot of chemical reactions happen and certain kinks in the surface. You can have atoms missing. You can put atoms in the middle of things, but it's more or less, like I said, lots and lots of the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, then there's covalent. Covalent is the sharing of electrons, or we'll also learn later the unequal sharing of electrons. That's polar covalent. And then metallic, that's where you have a bunch of positive electrons and then a sea of electrons in between them. So the idea, I'm sorry, positive nuclei and then there, there's electrons flow in between the atoms like a sea of electrons. So if you look here, I've projected a two-dimensional image of a ion compound. And let's say I whack it with a hammer and I move it over by one atom. What happens? Well, there, right here you can see that... There's a little bit of a squiggly line there, right? So the um, the now where you had positive next to a negative, now you have the negative next to a negative and a positive next to a positive, and because of that, you the the uh, ionic compound can break real easily. That's so uh, ionic compounds tend to be very brittle, like salt. You can take salt and you can pound it in the dust. Now over here is like a metal, and you have electrons flowing in between the atoms like so. What happens if you whack a piece of metal with a hammer? Well, it puts a dent in it, but is it still like a metal? Yeah, the sea of electrons still goes through. So whereas uh, ionic compounds tend to be brittle, metals tend to be ductile. That means they're bendy. They're bendy and then they, they still work fine. So this is a better illustration of that. So sodium metal there, you can see I, I've kind of drawn the, the sea of electrons. And then there's a 3D ionic uh, sodium chloride molecule. And then chlorine there shows the, uh, the sharing of electrons between the two chlorine atoms. <clears throat> okay, so now when you have chemical formula, so I've written there calcium hydroxide, CaOH2, uh, in those parentheses, that means there's two of what's in those parentheses, so two OHs. And drawn beneath there, I C6H12O6, that is glucose, and C12H22O11, that's sucrose, so two sugars. And if you know your dietitian uh, or dietary stuff, uh, a common name for sugars are carbohydrates. So if you look at this... <clears throat> C, uh, glucose C6H12O6 is like six carbons and six waters. And likewise, sucrose is like 12 carbons and 11 waters. So that's what the term carbohydrates came from. They're not really hydrates. So a hydrate is when a water molecule is trapped interstitially. These are all connected. So they're not really hydrates, but they have formulas of hydrates. The name stuck. So it's an improper, improper name. So now let's talk about uh, naming other things. So uh, first of all, binary compounds containing two different elements. You have the name of the cation plus the base name of the anion plus IDE. So here, CABR2, calcium and bromine. Calcium, you keep the name of the cation. Calcium and then bromine, brome. So bromide, calcium bromide. And that's all good for the uh, elements that just have one charge. 
What about the elements that have multiple charges? So lead, for instance, can be plus 2 or plus 4. How do we deal with that? So you have the name of the cation, uh, typically the metal, and then the charge of the metal uh, within Roman numerals and parentheses, and, then pl and the same thing as before, base name of the anion plus IDE. So PBCL4 is uh, chlorine, which I know you're kind of getting this all thrown at you once, Chlorine is, has a charge of minus 1. That forces lead to have a charge of plus 4. So we call it lead 4 chloride. In Roman numerals, the way they work, uh, I is 1, V is 5, X is 10, L is 50, C is 100, M is 1,000. And if you have a lower number before the first one, it means one less than. So uh, 1, 2, and 3, I've written over here, 1, 2, 3, it's one i, two i's for two, three i's for three, four is one less than five. So iv, five is v, six is one more than five, seven, eight, nine is one less than ten, and ten is just x. So you probably won't get a charge higher than seven or seven or so. So, But uh, just if you want to know the system there. And uh, here are some common polyatomics. So uh, a monatomic ion, so if you're in a monogamous relationship, how many people do you see? Mono, one. If you're a polygamist, how many people are you engaged in a relationship? So uh, polyamory, many love. So how many is many? It's more than one, two or more. So polyatomic ion, so for instance here, acetate, C2H3O2, so that's got seven atoms all with a minus one charge, that's acetate. So up there I've written Na, C2H3O2, that's sodium, and then just the polyatomic ion name, acetate. So, uh, and you can have things like oxide or peroxide, that's just two, hypochlorite. So you can have, you can have two, you can have many. Okay, naming molecular compounds. So we were naming ionic compounds before. Let's move on and talk about molecular compounds. So molecular compounds, same idea, prefix, name of the first element, prefix, name of the second element, plus IDE. If there's only one in the first one, you drop the, uh, the mono. So, uh, but if there is more than one, you got to use the other prefixes. The second one, you always have to use a prefix. So, uh, and here's the prefixes. Mono is 1, di is 2, tri 3, tetra 4, penta 5, hexa 6, hepta 7, octa 8, nana 9, deca 10. So like carbon dioxide, CO2, you you because it's it's one carbon uh, in the first element, you drop the, uh, the, the mono. CO, one carbon, one oxygen, is carbon monoxide. Even though you drop the mono for the first one, you do not drop it for the second one. All right, so let's name each of these. Ni3, this is the name of the first element, nitrogen, and then this triiodide. And I can tell you, writing out chemical compounds destroys your spell checker. It's always, you, have to, you can't trust the computer, you have to check yourself. First one here, you still keep its, its phosphorus. For us, how do you spell phosphorus? Phosphorus. And then penta chloride. So that's no U. Phosphorus. Phosphorus. There we go. And so you drop the mono for the last one here. You have to use the uh, prefix because it's more than one. So you use tetra. Phosphorus, uh, deca sulfide. So, big, big, long name, right? So, all right. And here is the nomenclature flow chart. And inorganic, because these are not the carbon containing. So, this is the review for what we talked about so far. So ionic ones, the left part. So metal, non-metal only. Uh, one type of ion. It's just name of cation metal plus the base name plus IDE. 
this way here. If it's more than one, include the Roman numeral charge. Uh, molecular nonmetals, prefix, uh, drop mono for the first element, prefix, first element, prefix, base name plus IDE. Now acids, we didn't cover this yet, so I'm going to cover here. Uh, in acid, uh, if it's two element, you, you go here and you say the word hydro, base metal name, plus ick, then the word acid. So HCl, hydro, chloric, chlor, ick, acid. So if it's HBr, it's hydro, brom, ick, acid. So then oxyacids, the acids that contain oxygen, so eight and eight. So problem with chemistry is that we do not uh, necessarily, um, we don't have a set name for what eight and eight is. So chlorate is ClO3 and sulfate is SO4. So we have three oxygens for chlorine for eight and four oxygens for sulfur for eight. So you just have to know which one is eight. And eight just means one less. So, and if there is one less than that, it's hypoite. If there's more, one more oxygen than the eight, it's hypo. Okay, so uh, let's see here. So phosphate, PO4. So you have the uh, base name of the oxyanion, so phosphorus, phos, phospho. And then, so uh, then you have phosphoric acid. So base name plus ic acid. If it was PO, H3PO3, it would be phosphorus acid. And, uh, okay, and I, there's the other answer with ITE with sulfurous acid. Okay, and, and this does not include the, the one less. So uh, chloric acid, that's the, that's the eight. That's the one right here. So chloric acid, that's chlorate. Uh, chlorous acid, that's chlorite. Hypochlorite would be, that's HClO. That would be hypochlorous acid. And then ClO4, so that's perchlorate. ClO4 is perchlorate, so that would be perchloric acid. So, all right, done with this section now.